Let's talk about domain and range. We've talked about it a little bit. We're going to talk about it a lot now. Here's a graph. And notice the open holes at the end. What that means is, make it a little bigger there, an open hole means that normally we would say that x equals 4 and y equals 4. So this would be the point 4, 4. Let me write that down. And this would be the point negative 2, 0. The thing is, those points are not really there. They're called the end points. And for this drawing, for this particular graph, X does not actually equal 4. And Y does not actually equal 4. There are lots of points in here that X and Y do equal. But X does not equal negative 2. And Y does not equal, not, equal, Zero. On the other hand, this point, which looks like one, two, that's there. X equals one. Y equals two. And there is no problem at all. There are an infinite number of points between these two empty endpoints but the endpoints themselves do not exist. So we're going to talk about how you would write the domain and range under those circumstances. So I'm going to actually color in the domain and the range. I'm going to let the, let's change it to size two, three is just too big. I'm going to change the domain to, well, I'm not going to change the domain. I'm going to color it in, in blue. From negative two to positive four. But X does not actually equal negative two and X does not actually equal four. So the way I would normally write it under those circumstances would be with a parenthesis here and a parenthesis here. Meaning that X does not actually equal negative two or four, but it does equal all of these points, X values on the X axis in between. Now the range is the Y coordinates. Let's change that to a two. Come on, there you go. All right, so notice that the Y coordinates start here at Y equals zero, but not including Y equals zero, and go all the way up to four, but not including four. Bleh. Everything goes great until uh, 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 oh well, it's almost straight. So now, because y doesn't actually equal four and y doesn't actually equal zero, I'm going to put parentheses right here and write here. And that's a sign to me that we are dealing with open holes. 
So let's talk about how you would write the domain and the range in two ways. In set builder notation and in interval notation. The first thing we're going to work on is domain. Now over here in interval notation, we've already pretty well got that interval written. We're going to have parentheses on the left, parentheses on the right, and I'm going to have a negative two on the left and a four on the right. So this is how I would write this in interval notation, which is, let me turn this to one, written like this, parenthesis, parenthesis, negative two, and four, and a comma in between. Um, yeah. Okay, now over here, notice that all of the X's go are or exist between negative two on the left and four on the right. So this is how I would write the domain in set builder notation. That's called a brace, but you can also call it a squiggle. X and a bar. And what the bar says is all the numbers on the X axis such that. X is strictly between the left end point negative two and the right end point positive four. Now I'm going to change it for just a minute and then erase the change. If X could equal negative two, I would have put a bar underneath like that. And that would say negative two is less than or equal to X. But remember, that x cannot equal negative 2, so I'm going to erase it. There. Now, if x could equal positive 4, whoops, I would put a line like that. But it can't. Not in this particular graph. If you want to ask why, well, this is created by the publisher, created by the authors of the book that this program is paired with, and they just wanted to show you this. We'll have others, so don't worry. Anyway, your set builder notation is here. All of the numbers on the x-axis such that X is between, but not equal to, negative two and positive four. That would be a lot of words to write. So this is our math code for the domain. If you're writing in set builder notation, if you're writing in interval notation, this says exactly the same thing with even fewer symbols that the interval of numbers taken up by the domain is on the x-axis, not equaling negative two and four, but from negative two to four, um, uh, and that's the interval right there. I really like interval notation, and you're gonna see it's what we use most of the time, but publishers in any math book you use are would prefer to use this. I don't know why. Maybe because they're already set up for it. OK, now let's look at the range. The range is on the Y axis, just like the domain is on the X axis. So remember that when this is an empty hole, 
X cannot equal negative two and Y cannot equal zero. X cannot equal four and Y cannot equal four. So, our, our, um, our range is going to go from Y equals zero to Y equals four, but of course Y is not going to actually equal the end points. So we're going to come down here to where we're going to write the range. And in set builder, you would have squiggle, squiggle, all Y, such that Y is between zero and four, but not equal to zero and not equal to four. In interval notation, the y's go from y equals zero to y equal four, but the parentheses mean that y cannot equal zero and y cannot equal four. Now maybe set builder is better for this because it tells you right away what axis you're working on. Whereas for interval notation, you just have to know. Do notice that for domain in interval notation, we go from left to right always. And for interval notation, in, in um, for the range, we always go from lowest or lower. There are only two numbers. So lower to higher. There. Lower to higher. And I guess it would have been better really to put a comma up there. Left, for me, it was always true that left to right is easy to remember, lower to higher is not. All right, we're asked a couple of other things. We're asked to find F of one. Okay, we're going to do that. F of 1. What that means is 1, the number 1 on the x-axis, because, let me go back, 1 is in the parentheses. We have F of 1, and this is always an x. I guess I better let those people in. The only thing is, I don't know how. How am I going to let them in? I've been letting them in. Oh, good. Thank you so much. Okay, so one is an X, and we need to see what the graph is pairing it up with. So here's one on the X axis. One is right here. And it is being sucked up to the graph. And then over to the Y axis. At two. Which makes this point where that change occurs. one comma two one is being paired with two it's being mapped one is being mapped to two so i have to write that down ah 
wrong button. Two. Okay, if X is one for this graph, Y equals two. One is being mapped to two. Okay, now we're gonna go the other way. We're going to find the value of X. We're looking for X such that, or where, F of X equals two. Well, remember, I mean, you can see this, X is in here. Y is out here. This time we know that Y is two. So we're gonna go up here and find two, and now we're gonna go back the other way. We're gonna go to the graph, and then go down to the x-axis. And no surprise here, two is being paired with one. So x equals one. So I'm trying to make my x's blue here. So X equals two. That's the uh, uh, X equals one. I lied. Don't trust me. One. In other words, this is true. What we already know from up here. X equals one is being paired with Y equal two. By far, this is the most difficult part, but you do have to know all of it. So, are there any questions? Oh, and if there are, well, I, I might be able to hear you. So far, I'm hearing okay. Sometimes the, uh, the sound goes in and out. Okay, let's go on. We have basically the same problem. Only this time, the circles are colored in. What that means is that X equals four, and that's a little blurry. There, that's better. X actually does equal four. And going over here, Y actually does equal four. Because now that end point is colored in, so it's included. So our point four four really does exist. And the same thing is true over here. X equals negative two. And over here, Y equals four. And Y equals zero. Because Y is always zero on the X axis. So that means that this point, just gonna write it in black because it's easier, negative two zero really does exist. Well, that's going to change our, our interval notation and our set builder notation just a little bit. However, the domain is still going to be in the same place. That's the domain right there. And our range is going to be in the same place. This time, I'm going to use brackets and brackets. 
and brackets and brackets. The reason for that is that X actually does equal negative two, X actually does equal four, Y actually does equal zero, and Y actually does equal four. So we're gonna come down here to set builder notation. We're gonna write the domain first. I think, yeah, we can, we can see both, at least for this first line. All the numbers on the x-axis such that the x values are between or equal to negative two and four. That's how you write it this time, when the endpoints are solid points. And over here, we write actually what we see. Interval notation is based on what the graph would be. So bracket, bracket, endpoint, left endpoint, right endpoint, comma between them. And that is the interval notation for the domain. Now the range, we're actually gonna have to not be looking at this when we write that. Maybe I should have found a way to put it up here. I don't know. But we are going to, well, all right. The range goes between y equals zero and y equals four. So, brace all the numbers on the y-axis such that y is between or equal to zero and four on the y-axis, but I already said that. And in interval notation, we've got brackets. And we've got brackets. We've got a parentheses between the two numbers. Here is the lower end point on the y-axis. And here is the higher end point on the y-axis. My house is full of pets, so you're gonna hear noise from time to time. Wonder who it is this time. Anyway, you see that there's only a very little difference here between how you write the interval notation when the endpoints are solid and when the endpoints are open. Incidentally, just for your information, because we're going to use it later, these intervals with the parentheses, with the open endpoints, they're called open intervals. This is an open interval. And this describes an open interval. This down here too, both of these. They're both called open intervals. This will become important later.
OK. If there are no questions, or you can write them in chat. Now we have this graph. A squiggle graph. Actually, this is a version of y equals x to the third. It's not exact. Something has been done to it, but it looks like y equals x to the third power. You're going to be memorizing these later too. You're going to be knowing so much when you get out of this class. It's amazing. But right now, all we care about really at the moment is domain and range. The domain is on the x-axis, the range is on the y-axis. So, as far as the domain is concerned, what you want to do is try to only think in terms of left and right. Notice that this graph tilts out to the left as it goes down, and it's going to be going on and on and on forever, therefore, this guy's going to go to the left forever and ever and ever. And up here, this arm, I call them arms. This arm is going to go to the right forever and ever and ever. Infinity is a long, long interval. And a long time. It's got all the time in the universe to eventually get all the way to the left and all the way to the right. So, for that reason, and since the real numbers live on the x-axis and on the y-axis, the domain is going to be the entire x-axis, the whole thing. All the way to the right, and all the way to the left. From negative infinity to positive infinity. So in set builder notation, while I believe your homework answer, because you're new, you're new to this and they know that, they give you the answer, all real numbers, or X is all real numbers. That's not really how it's written, and they're going to change soon to this. X, such that, and then they write, X is all real numbers. And then they eventually change to X is real. none of which are what mathematicians actually use, but we're not even going to go into it. Right now, your answer is going to be X, all real numbers. Now let's go over here. Interval notation doesn't change much, and it doesn't use words at all. Thank goodness. Your end points are negative infinity and positive infinity. They're not numbers, they're symbols. So X cannot equal negative infinity, and X cannot equal positive infinity, because they stand for something else, which is keeps going. Negative infinity means keeps going to the left. Positive infinity means keeps going to the right. So in interval notation, our domain is negative infinity comma infinity. Have we talked about what the real numbers are? If not, let me write that down real fast so you'll know. The real numbers are all the numbers you know about. 
the real numbers are Well, the real numbers, the real, which is what I should call it. The real number system, it's our number system. You can use it to count apples. I didn't mean to leave that gap there. We'll leave it like that. You can use it to count apples or you can use it for all sorts of strange things normal things or strange things, okay? So first, it, the real numbers consists of all the integers. Integers are whole numbers that are positive or negative or zero. So numbers like, for instance, going all the way to the left forever, negative three, negative two, negative one, zero, one, two, three, and then to the right for zero, forever. And it consists of the fractions which are called rationals or rational numbers. R, A, rationals. The rationals are fractions. Negative two fifths, positive one third, um, 47 elevenths, uh, the number three, because three can be written as a fraction, three over one, or six over two, or you can think of all the different ways you could get the number three. And even some square roots, like the square root of four, because it equals two, and two can be written as a fraction just by putting it over one, two over one. So the rationals are any number that can be written as a fraction. The irrationals, which are also real numbers, are numbers that can never exactly be written as a fraction. Like the square root of seven. Or negative the square root of three. Or pi. Or e. We're gonna be working with e a lot. E is used in business a lot. It's also used in, in science. E is about 2.7 but does not exactly equal 2.7. Pi is about 3.14, but does not exactly equal 3.14. So the integers, the rationals, and the irrationals, these are all on the x-axis, and they're all on the y-axis. So when they say all real numbers, this is what the author of your book means. All the numbers in the real number system. Now, the range. The range is on the y-axis, and you can see easily that this graph goes up forever and down forever. That's the entire y-axis right there. Up forever and down forever. Okay. That's your range. In set builder notation, you would say, well, what they tell you is, Y is all real numbers.
but if you were writing in set builder notation, y such that y, that is all the numbers on the y-axis, such that y is real. Or a real number. That's kind of a redundancy if you've ever had, well, of course you've had English classes and you've heard the word redundancy before. That's when it's totally unnecessary to say that because the y-axis consists of only real numbers. So this is a way of saying that y can be any number and every number on the y-axis. Interval notation, well, we always go from lowest, negative infinity, which is all the way down, to positive infinity, all the way up. Negative infinity to positive infinity. These look alike, but they're really completely different. This is lower, or in this case, lowest, to highest. And if it were possible to say leftist, I would, but I can't. So it's all the way to the left and all the way to the right. This is the x-axis. And this is the y-axis. So these answers, when you're writing in black, which is how most of us write, um, they look exactly the same, but they do mean different things. OK, we're also being asked two other things. We're being asked, what is f of negative 1? That is, x equals negative 1 is going to be taken to a y number. What number is it taken to? So this is negative 1. Goodness. Aha, okay. Well, here's negative one right here. It goes, it or it gets taken, kind of sucked down to the uh, to the graph, and then sent over to the y-axis, where it encounters negative one. So negative one is mapped to negative one. X equals negative one is mapped to Y equals negative one. Okay, now we also have uh, finding all the x values such that f of some x number, that is, an x number, has already been mapped to y equals 2. What x coordinate, what x number, what number on the x axis has already been mapped to y equals 2? Let's find out. Here is y equals 2, right here. I go over to the graph, and then down to the x-axis, and I land on x equals 2. So that means x equals 2. We knew what the y number was, now we know that x is 2.
OK. I'm open to discussion. OK. Now. This is the graph of absolute value. It's been moved over. It's not in its home position, but it is a graph of Y equals the absolute value of X. So this is an example of. An example of the graph of Y equals the absolute value of X. Anything can be graphed. And it's a function. Now first we're going to find the domain. And you can easily see, remember that for domain, we think about left to right. So I'm not thinking about going up or anything like that. I'm only thinking left to right. This is going to the left forever and it's going to the right forever. So one more time, this is our domain, the entire X axis. So in set builder notation, you're given X is all real numbers. Or a little bit later, all the numbers on the X axis such that X is real. And in set builder notation, we go from negative infinity to positive infinity, which are just symbols. So X and Y actually cannot equal them. And that's why we use parentheses whenever there's an end point that is, I'm getting eaten by mosquitoes again, but an end point that's an infinity. I can't stand spraying myself. Blech. Okay, now, the, dome, uh, the range is all the Y values. Notice that the graph starts down here, and then it's going to go up forever, all the way up to positive infinity but it doesn't start anywhere down here. It starts on the x-axis where y equals zero. So this is the range. So we're going to have now notice it actually touches down. There's not a hole there. So we're going to be using brackets. And a parenthesis here. Because Y cannot equal infinity. But it certainly can equal. Let me make that fatter. It certainly can equal Y equals zero because it does right there at the point six zero. So the range is going to be. Now this is kind of strange, so watch my thinking. 
Okay. All the numbers on the Y axis such that Y is equal to or greater than zero. Over here, it's a lot more normal. We're going to use a bracket around y equals zero, zero, but parenthesis around positive infinity. Because y can actually equal zero and does, but it certainly cannot equal infinity, which is just a symbol, not a number. So these are the two versions of the range of this graph right here. Starts at y equals zero and goes up forever. So that the y numbers, no matter how far up they go, are going to be equal to or greater than zero. Okay, and we've got that little game again. What is f of three? That is three on the x-axis is being mapped to what y number? Three on the x-axis right here. So we go up to the graph and then over to the Y axis at three. So X equals three is being mapped to Y. No, but you don't write it. y equals three. And that's your answer. Now we're gonna go the other way. And this is a surprise, perhaps. We need to find all the values of x for which f of x equals two. That is y equals two. If y equals two, then what x's were mapped to it? So we're looking for those for that x or those x's. Okay, I'm gonna go to y equals three. And I am going to make a line in which y is three forever. Y will always be three on this line. Notice that three is mapped to three. We already knew that. But here, three is also being mapped to Oops, should have made that blue, but I didn't. Boom, 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 boom. Nine on the x-axis. Three is being mapped to two different numbers. It's a y-coordinate, so that's allowed. Three is being mapped to three, and it's also being mapped to nine. So our answers here in the answer box, which remember is blue, three, 
3 and 9. Okay, now you're going to learn about something in the far future, in December, called one-to-one -one functions. You don't have to know anything about them now. But this happens when you do not have a one-to-one -one function. This is not one-to-one, -one because Y can be mapped to two different X coordinates. Okay. Just thought I'd mention it. You've heard it. Now just let it sink to the back. And it will come out again in December. But you can have two number answers. So let's go over it again. If we're mapping three, and this says, just map the number X equals three. Okay, well three gets mapped to three. But then when it says, okay, what X values are being mapped to Y equal two? Three went to three. Oops, I went to the wrong number. All right, never mind. Erase, erase. Y equals two is not three. Imagine that. Who would have thought? Now, we're going to erase this. Erase. Erase all the evidence. Oh no, I did that, didn't I? All right, well. Okay. Well, three is being mapped to three. But now, But now, two, this is y equals two. Let's try this again. I'm gonna make a, a y equals two line where for all eternity, y is going to equal two. Now I come over here and I go down to the X axis. And I see that my number is four. And I go over here to this number. Y is also being mapped to eight. Eight. Right here. Huh. So four and eight are the numbers that y is being y equals two is being mapped to. Well, on the bright side, you got to see it twice, and you got to see it wrong. See how easy it is to stop being careful. I stopped being careful. And I made a very big boo-boo. Now, presumably, getting the answer wrong the first time in my math lab would wake me up and I'd say, well, what did I did wrong? What did I do wrong? Oh, yeah, it was supposed to be a two, not a three. Hopefully, that would work. Okay, now. More domain. This time, 
No funny numbers. We're just being asked about what is the domain and what is the range of this figure right here. Well, the domain goes from, is on the x-axis, from the farthest left point to the farthest right point. So, my domain is going to go from here to here. Notice the points are closed in. That means I'm going to use brackets. So this is negative six. X equals negative six right here. All the way to X equals positive six right here. We're only interested in the X coordinates of the farthest left point and the farthest right point. And you can see that these match up. Okay, so first let's put, do this in interval notation which I find enormously easier. But that's only because my teachers only used interval notation. It's a fairly new thing to have an interest in Set Builder. Okay, now in Set Builder, we're going to have, we're going to write squiggle all the numbers on the x axis such that they obey the rule I'm about to write. Namely, that X is between and can equal the left X value, negative six, to the right X value, positive six. Now the range is always on the Y axis. My lowest point is here. So here is where the Y axis meets up with it, matches up with it. And I'm gonna go up until I get to the highest point. And that's up here. No, goodness. Better not go drive anywhere. Okay, now I'm gonna put a bracket here. And I'm going to put a bracket here. Do you see how I wanna go down the whole way? Don't. Now, what is this point? Ah, uh, I went down too far anyway, okay. How did I do that? Carelessness, carelessness. There, now stop. Whew, okay. Negative one, negative two, negative three. Okay. And positive one, positive two, positive three, positive four. Now, we have this right. The range goes from negative three to positive four. And I use brackets because these endpoints are colored in. And this point up here, the highest point, these points are all colored in, which means that um, X is actually equaling one, and Y is actually equaling four, and so on. X is actually equaling four, Y is actually equaling four, and so on. 
Okay, so in interval notation, because it's so much like the graph, if you graph it first, you can actually see very easily how to do the interval notation. It's the set builder that I admit can be tricky. Okay, all the Y numbers on the Y axis such that Y is between or equal to negative three on, no, negative three is the lowest, positive four is the highest. So there we go. Any, any questions about this, considering I tried really hard to mess you up? Not on purpose, but oh well. Any questions? We've only got a couple of more. There's this one. This one's tricky. All these holes are filled in, so we don't have to worry about any nasty stuff going on. But look, this graph is going to go down forever, and it's also going to the left forever. So it's going down forever. Well, it's going down forever and to the left forever. Okay, so this end of it is going to go to, see I'm trying to think here, negative infinity. And this goes, look at this, this stays flat and it goes to the right forever, which means it is going to get out to a positive infinity. So the domain is not tricky at all. The domain goes from negative infinity to positive infinity. Although it looked pretty tricky. There and there. So, down here we're going to have X is all real numbers. Or, all the X's on the X axis such that X is real. Which of course it is. It couldn't be anything else if it's on the X axis. Over here in interval notation, we've got negative infinity on the left and negative infinity on the right. So that's another way of saying the entire X axis. And again, we go all the way to the left because this is tilting out to the left. Like that. Now the range. The graph is going down forever. We can see that. So we're going to go all the way to negative infinity. And then the highest we're going to go is here and not above it. So our range is going to go all the way to negative infinity, all the way up to y equals 5.
So, while what we're thinking is this, all the y's on the y-axis such that x is between negative infinity and five, and it can also equal five, that is not the way we write it. Although it would be worth almost all the credit, it's pretty good. It shows understanding. But there's a shorter way to write it. And here it is. If you were to kind of turn this on its side so that the y axis this is the y axis turned on its side notice that if 5 is here and negative infinity is here, then one way of looking at this is to say that, well, okay, all of the y's on the y-axis have to be below five. So all the y's are going to be to the left of five, and because we can clearly see that y equals five there, y can also equal five. That's the way we're going to write it. Namely, that y, whatever y is, it's going to be less than or equal to any number in the universe on the y-axis, less than or equal to five. It's a little tricky, I admit. But we can always depend on interval notation. We're gonna go from lowest to highest, period. lowest to highest and since x equals five y equals five i put a bracket here these things can get a little complicated so you should meditate on this later. OK, got six minutes. This is quick. All we're looking for is where is X equals negative four being mapped? Where is X equals negative three being mapped? And where is X equals negative two being mapped? This will take all of one minute. X equals negative two is right here. Well, yeah, there's an awful lot of blue going on there. So let's just make it black. Negative two on the X axis is being mapped to this number, negative one, negative two, negative three, on the y-axis. So negative two is being mapped to negative three. X equals negative three is right here. And it is being mapped to y equals negative two.
and negative four is right here, and negative four is being mapped to, well, if this is negative four, that's negative five, to negative five on the y-axis. I did kind of go backwards. I should have gone, well, I mean, it doesn't make any difference. Negative four, negative three, negative two. And then say negative four is mapped to negative five. Negative three is mapped to negative two. Negative two is mapped to negative three. where these are always the X's and these are always the Y's. And finally, I graph this for you. The graph is not on um, 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 my math lab. You don't have to look at the graph. It's scary enough. This is a rational function. Let me write that for you. Rational means fraction. Rational function. It has a domain and a range. We're only being asked about the domain. There is a break in the domain. Right there. That's called a vertical asymptote. You'll learn about them later too. But right now, just take my word for it. That's where the break in the domain is. And there is actually a hole in the x-axis right there. So I'm gonna make it white. So the x-axis goes from negative infinity to whatever that number is that we're going to find out. And from the other side of that number all the way to positive infinity. But we need to find out where that number is. Here's how. Take the entire denominator. If any number for x makes your fraction, oh, well, if, if, there, if what you have is 4 over 0, this is undefined. And in real life, it means an explosion is going on, and this is always a danger in a power plant because you're dealing with a lot of pressure. Water under pressure. Steam. Okay, there could always be an explosion. Well, if this gets close to zero, there will be. So what we have to do is this. 10 minus 7x equals zero. Because we need for it to not equal zero, we need to find what x will make the bottom equal zero. So I'm going to add 7x to both sides of the equation. Negative 7x plus 7x is zero. So I'll be left with a 10 on the left and zero plus 7x is 7x. Then to solve for x, I divide by 7, and I divide by 7, and I find out that the bad boy, or girl, or letter, or number, is 10 sevenths. If x equals 10 sevenths, we're going to have 4 over 0, which means 
kaboom, which is not what any of us want. So we have found out that this number right here on the x-axis is 10 sevenths. Now, we're going to write the domain in set builder notation and in interval notation. Set builder notation. All the numbers on the X axis except for X cannot equal 10 sevenths. That's the way you write it in interval notation. Ah, set builder. In set builder notation. In interval notation, this is what we're going to do. We're going to say all these numbers, and this is the last one, all these numbers from negative infinity to the left side of 10 sevenths are okay. And all these numbers from the right side of 10 sevenths to positive infinity are okay. So here's how I write that. Negative infinity to the left side of 10 sevenths the right side of 10 sevenths. Notice X cannot equal 10 sevenths. So I put a parenthesis, 10 sevenths to positive infinity. These are the two intervals that are okay, and I glue them together with a U. And that's what interval notation would look like. This is a special U that you have to get out of your uh, tool, toolbox when you're asked. I believe this is all you're asked for, but I want you to be able to read both of them. Since you never know which you're going to be asked for, you might be asked for set builder, you might be asked for interval notation. So you have to be able to use both. And that's it for today.